Alrighty, at the request of Sotonus, um, I'm going to go ahead and do the residence now. And um, thanks everyone for your friendship, your comments, and um, you let me know that you do enjoy my sharing, my insane love of uh, music and records. And so I'll um, do the residence and however long it takes is however long it takes, okay? I want to first start by telling you how I discovered the residence. Um, I think maybe I was 21, 22, I'm really bad at chronology, but I had a friend who worked in a record store named Alan Haynes, and um, he was a new friend, and we bonded over Peter Gabriel. Yeah, I saw him with a Peter Gabriel shirt or something in the store, and and we we spoke of our love of Genesis, and that was and it was on. And then as I got to know him, he said he had this friend that I needed to meet named Wes Van Ness, who had the most incredible space rock collection he had ever seen. And when I met Wes, it was like meeting uh, a long lost brother. Um, truly, his collection blew my mind, mainly because he had the money to buy the records that I didn't. I knew his collection, I knew almost everything. I just couldn't afford to own it at the time. And he had the residence, he had um, his collection is, well, he had to sell it, unfortunately, but at the time he had their first records. He had some amazingly rare records by the residents among other people. And, um, when I first heard them, it, it was very, it was very creepy and I wasn't sure what I thought at first and I didn't like it at first, but they did this, they had this record called the residents play the Beatles play the resident the Be play, you know, okay. And it was creepy. You know, made my skin crawl, but it also intrigued me, and 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 that was part of the intrigue was why am I having such a strong reaction? Okay, so that's how I got turned on to the resonance. I need to also let you know before I start showing the records that because I've gone through several phases of of problems trying to deal with religion. I'll say it again: it's been a burr in my ass, and I sold. A bunch of residence records to a friend who consequently was murdered so I don't know who has those record now records now matter of fact another quick part of the story was that this person was Buck of Buck Naked and the Bare Bottom Boys a band that started in Omaha went out to California Primus became good friends with them and Primus have um, done several tributes to Buck Naked in their their videos we're known as Big Brown Beaver. Beaver is one of them where they, in the plastic of uh, uh, prosthetics they're wearing, that's them being bare buck naked. And the lead guy, Buck, we, he and I were good friends since high school. And I remember him telling me, Derek, are you sure you want to sell these residence records to me? He wouldn't, he wanted them, but he wouldn't let me sell them to him actually for, I think, a month or so because he said, you need to think about this, Derek. I don't really think you know what you're doing. And so it finally got down to when he was about to live, move to San Francisco and he asked me finally, so do you really want to sell me these re residence records? And I was in this psychosis. It was, a, I don't know how else to put it. I was in a state of religious psychosis. And I said, yes, I have to get this unclean music out of my house. <sighs> God, how in, inane. That's my opinion now. And so I sold him some really rare residence records that I have not been able to replace except for one because they were so freaking rare, okay? So, with that in mind, I'll show you what I do have and what I've been able to accumulate since then. The residents, again, are one of the most infamous non unknown bands. They've never shown their faces. People speculate who they think they are, and I think that the residents aren't anyone famous. They are... <laughs> You listen to the residents and their music is so singular you couldn't fake being the residents and i would imagine if you were someone more famous that this you would hear traces of it in the other music so that's my opinion so i'll start by showing their first album this is a reissue of meet the residents and again this is one of the first examples of someone sampling and looping where they use nobody but me by the outsiders they use a, a scratched copy where it skips to great effect and um, a skipped record as a loop. Just brilliant. 
Meet the residents. Let me just keep going here, okay? I was very happy to find another copy of this album because this was my first record that I bought by the, the residents, which is Fingerprints. And I found that this is an original copy. I am quite certain I won't bet money. But I found this in New York at a fairly reasonable price. And I looked at it. And I looked at the numbers. I remember my copy. It's, it's, I'm pretty sure this is an original copy. I got it at a decent price. Um, don't know what to say. When you listen to The Residents, you enter an alternate universe. But strangely enough, that alternate universe is actually real America. Real America, in many ways, is very strange and very creepy and very unsettling, as well as wonderful, which that's the part we want to focus on. But the residents, and that's why I love them so much, especially now, is that they were taken away, peel back the thin veil of civility and look at what we really are. And it creeps you out. The next record I'll show is not available. My good friend Jeff, who I hope to see tonight, um, hasn't been over for weeks, has talked about this record and his love-hate relationship with it, not available. The residents had a theory that they could not release this music until they forgotten they made it. Just that idea alone, I think, is just excellent. Well, we can't put it out until we don't, we, we forgot that we made it. <laughs> so I think this came out like maybe three or four years after they'd recorded it, supposedly. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. But what an excellent and imaginative story. And then the record, the music, the whole trip of this of this record, you know, ships going down. Weird. It's like, yeah, this was quite a work of art. I believe it was 1982 that myself and a couple friends found out that the residents were, residents were going to perform live again for the first time since the first, I think, two shows that they'd ever done. They had only ever played live twice, I understand, before doing the Mole Show live in, um, in, in San Francisco and L.A. So we decided that we were going to go. And... Um, Boy, was it a trip. But I bought this at the show, and this is the music of the intermission. The Mole Show was broken up into two parts. Penn Gillette was the um, narrator, got to meet him before the show the second night, and consequently he ended up um, including me in the show. I'll explain in a minute. I'd love it if there's a bootleg audio of the San Francisco second night because if there is you hear him call my name out Derek I was in the front row center but I bought this this was the intermission music I was able to find a bootleg of the mole show this is the one of the LA performances I still would love to know if anyone has a copy of the San Francisco shows I was at both of them but this is the mole show live really well recorded and the Mole Show Live was just devastatingly whoa I, I, I'm at a loss for words it was well worth the long ass bus Greyhound bus ride with smelly ass drunks to get out there it was well worth it next we have Residue of the Resonance and um, this is a collection of tracks that just didn't quite fit elsewhere. Um, I haven't read the back where it really explains how these tracks were assembled for this album, but again, it's a great, great listen, the Residence. Here, okay, then these aren't in, in order. I'm just going to keep going though. I have a 12-inch single of the Residence. They did a series of cover albums, John, John Philip Sousa, James Brown and Hank Williams and this is their version of Hank Williams call Elijah <laughs> really has not much at all to do with the original uh, obviously but they put their own spin on it and I love it and there they are in the eyeballs with Mr. Skull someone stole his um, custom-made eyeball headpiece from backstage at a show and he refused and I, I, I dig where he's coming from he refused to replace it. He wants the original back. I don't think they ever got the original back. 
And if the person that stole it by chance were to see this video, my message to you is, how dare you, motherfucker? Yeah, that's fucked up shit. Okay, let's keep going. The residents, it's a stranger than supper. I got to get back into this because, again, they put out a series of records where they, they just, kind of like Lil Wayne, they were constantly working on things, recording all the time, working on videos and concepts, and they were way ahead of the, the curve when it came to um, um, CD-ROMs and trying to um, take advantage of computer technology with games and stuff. So what I'm saying is this, this is one where I haven't listened to it in a while, and I'd have to revisit it to tell you exactly what it is that this record is about. Now one of the penultimate resident creations is this next album, and this is an original. I've had it since it came out. Thank goodness I knew not to get rid of Eskimo. 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 This is um, probably their masterpiece, in my opinion. You know, I don't know how much of this is based on true knowledge of the Eskimos and how much of it is made up, but it is a journey. And whoo, these guys are something else. This is my original copy on white vinyl. I've had this since it came out 20 something years, 30 years now. So glad that I had enough sense to not sell this. And Buck, if I remember correctly, he said, I refuse to let you sell Eskimo. I'm so glad he did. And God rest his soul, rest in peace. Let's keep going here. So here's Mark of the Mole. Um, there's several versions of this out. There's some limited edition copies that are signed by the residents in brown vinyl. This is not one of them. I've had opportunities to buy them. I don't want to pay $170, $200, $300 for one freaking record. Nothing. I don't. You know, I'll go as high as 50, 60, 70 bucks, you know, and even then I'm grumbling because it's like, for heaven's sakes, you know, what is the deal? Matter of fact, I was out at a record collector's house this morning. My friend Gary, who had a, had bought a copy of the resident, the, the Radiohead limited edition. And so I got to see it and I just said, okay, I'll, just offhand, what do you want for this? And it was like, oh, okay, never freaking mind. <laughs> never mind. No, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Let's keep going. Tunes of Two Cities came out after Mark of the Mole. Um, I, I believe it was part of the trilogy. And this is another fantastic album. Again, the residents don't make it easy at all for you to get into the music. It's jarring. It's bizarre. It's almost like they came up with their own uh, harmonic uh, system. And it's just awesome. Here is, I believe this is a colored vinyl, an import residents. PAL TV LP. Apparently they had some sort of European um, exposure on television and this album is related to that. Again, honestly, I have so many records and so many things going on that it's been years since I've listened to this. So I, again, just like I did with Swans last night, it's going to be time to uh, do a residence night here really soon and get reacquainted with the uh, eccentric genius of this band. Here we have the American Composer Series Volume 2. This is uh, Stars and Hank Forever, the music of Hank Williams and John Philip Sousa. And it's amazing what they did with those marches. Those the, Philip Sousa's marches are actually quite sophisticated musically and really um, very, very good listens. And what they did with it is like mind-blowing. It's like, who, who knew you could do that with a, a march? Oh, I just realized I got, oh, well, I'll have to show a separate video of the CDs. I'm just going to show the vinyl because it's just, you know, the CDs is a whole nother story. And then I've got some CD-ROMs. I think I have at least one somewhere. <sighs> My house. God in Three Persons, another one of their concept albums that really works. These guys are brilliant. It's on clear vinyl. I have I have um, some edits of this on a three-inch CD. They are like Frank Zappa. When the three-inch CD uh, thing, when they tried to market three-inch CDs, the residents in Frank Zappa jumped on it. 
and um, didn't go anywhere, but I did buy the, the uh, three inch CDs that they put out. Here is hit, uh, the residents doing Hit the Road Jack, uh, another one, part of that series, um, 12 inch. I do remember really liking this. And the last 12 inch uh, album I have by the residents is the 13th anniversary show. And I um, haven't played this in a while, but I remember enjoying this a lot. Just a lot, a great band. Man, the time just rolls, and I'm, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm going to keep going, all right? Just try to get these uh, singles shown to you right quick. So I have their version of Satisfaction. This is the first Residence record I think I actually got, other than uh, Fingerprints. And this is on yellow vinyl. And I actually think, in spite of how old this is, I think you can still find this relatively easily. Um... And it's it's well worth it, you know. They just completely ripped the shit out of the the stone satisfaction. It's it's a must hear. Here is a seven inch version of "It's a Man's 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 World" by James Brown, their version of it, and they have a really funny video for it as well. Really funny. Here's an original that I hung on to, um, Santa Dog seventy eight. Um, I was a member of the Residence Fan Club, and so I got this free as a Christmas gift that year. Their remake of Santa Dog, which is a very, I think, is their very first record, Santa Dog. And so on one side is the original version, and on the other is um, the, new, the newer version. And I do know for a fact that this is extremely collectible because the only way you could get it was to be a fan club member. And so that there aren't very many. I hung on, on I hung on to this baby. Santa Dogs of Jesus Fetus. The residents put out an album called The Commercial Album, which I have on CD like an idiot. I sold the vinyl. But they put out this album of one minute songs. Just a bunch of one minute songs. And uh, the, the commercial single came out in the UK uh, on a sub label of Famous Charisma, no less. Very interesting how this came together. But what's cool about this one is that it features two tracks that were not on the uh, the album. So uh, it's very collectible and very good. Here is a 7-inch picture disc of Kalija from the Stars in Hank Forever project that they, they put out. I want to uh, include Res uh, Snakefinger right quick because he, Snakefinger was a guitar guitarist from the UK who performed and played with the residents quite a bit on a bunch of their records. But he was not a resident because he was it was known who he was. But he was an integral part of their records, and you immediately recognize his playing when you hear it. So here is his uh, first single under the name Snakefinger, The Spot. And yes, it's autographed. I got it autographed by him, saw him in concert, uh, came to Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, <laughs> which was amazing that he'd come to Lincoln. Came to Lincoln, um, Eric Feldman, who was in Captain Beefheart, was in his band at the time. And uh, great show. Got to hang out with him for quite a while after the show. So, um, you know, I had brought this stuff hoping to get it autographed. I got it all autographed. Really spent so much time with him that when I went to San Francisco to the, the Mole Show, the second night I ran into Snakefinger out in the audience before the show. He, he remembered me. Partially because I'd given him a copy of my Norman and the Rockwells EP at the time. Something I used to do a lot when I would go to shows. I'd take records, and as much as I wanted to meet people, I also wanted to, to try to give them my music. And and he remembered, oh, the Norman, the Norman record. He liked it. Here's another one by him. Snake Fingers, Vestal Virgins. There's no justice in life. Man, this video is going a long time. So right quick, The Man in the Dark Sedan. Here's another one that he um, autographed for me, Kill the Great Raven. There's, here it is. And um, the last two things I'll show are these Buy or Die um, samplers that Re Ralph Records put out. Ralph Records was started by the residents, and so these would feature um, artists on the label besides, um, like, for example, MX80 Sound. Tuxedo Moon was on uh, Ralph Records for a while. 
And of course, there'd be something by Snakefinger in the residence. So that's what I'm going to share now. Uh, I'll actually have to do a part two to show the CDs, all right? I hope everyone's having a good day.